As far as I know. Uh, yeah, Linda doesn't want people, for heaven's sake. Well, uh, yeah. Linda yeah. does. So she's on the wait list, and I told her that she's welcome to come in. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you. We had a situation where somebody just arrived here at the Fox uh, Studios with a sign that said, uh, Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. She wasn't on the list. And, oh, oh God. God. Okay, what why, is she? What is she do? Why does Kendall just randomly uh, leave the meeting? This shows them. Okay. We're not doing anything productive. Roll the open. Here we go. Let's make it a good game. Let's do the tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. We oh. do it our <laughs> yes! I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. <laughs> I did not do that. Melissa. <laughs> We are live. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Thank you for being here. Clap one more time for Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good morning to you. Good morning. How's your Tuesday? Um, you know, it's fine. I just did a TED wave. I don't know why. I know. It's Producer like Ted does this in our meeting. So You're doing weird. well, though? Yeah, just fine. How's the baby? I had four Laffy Taffies before we came on air, so I'm on a sugar the, high. We call, yeah. Uh huh? We call the staff, we call that the 10 a.m. feeding, right? Mm -hmm. That's right, the yeah. snack time. Yeah. How's the baby? Baby's fine. Very, very kicky today. Just like, I'm going to punch fest in my gut. Yeah. Wonderful. And it's uh, <laughs> the baby this week is the size of what now? A Furby, which will change tomorrow. A Furby. Yeah. Tomorrow's it's a, new, but. Oh, tomorrow. Uh, it's on Wednesdays. Wednesdays the, is the new day. Yes. A Furby. A Furby. So about that big. Or a football. Yeah. You know, whatever's your tickles your fancy. Well, a, a, a Furby and a football are two different sizes. That's so what she said. That says. baby better make up its mind. Is it a I football or a Furby? I don't know. I don't know. Well, Anyway, <laughs> let me know, kid. Yeah, feels like a football. <laughs> Again, Kendall, we have a code. If the baby starts uh, kicking a lot, Kendall says alligator. Okay, I, again, you can't say the code. Like, no, but, but I mean, it's not a secret code. It's just a code <laughs> between us and everybody, and everybody else. else. I know we're all, I, you guys are my friends. I forget. <laughs> I forget we're on TV sometimes. Oopsies. I don't know. Uh, a little bit later in the show, I have a new best thing ever. And this is just a little, a little piece of sunshine here. I gotta tell you, I went to the Twins game yesterday, and that's where uh, the the best thing ever's from. It was just mm -hmm. a beautiful day at the ballpark. Yes. It was just, sure I, was. and if you're watching us from Seattle, you guys have nice fields too. But it mm -hmm. was just, I love tar. This is just a Target Field appreciation mm -hmm. uh, moment there. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. And I've the said, food. The food. Yeah, the food. I mean, I've said it before, but you know, I. I, I like to counter. I'm, uh, you know, I have civic pride. I know every big city has problems, but I love Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to. I sometimes try to counter the bad news with the good news. Mm -hmm. People were out. Restaurants were full. Mm -hmm. It was nice to see. I live in the neighborhood. I live just three blocks from yeah. the field, and it was fun to see people on patios. Right. People comes out. You know, they're out in their twins gear. Oh, yeah. It was just a really nice Minnesota day, and we weren't going to go. And I thought to myself. We don't have a lot of these days. I mean, if you think about it, we mm -hmm. it, the summer goes like that. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Even though it's a school night, let's go out to the game. Especially on Monday. I mean, you're in North Loop. I'm more like South Minneapolis. I did the same thing. Walked around the lake. There were yeah. a ton of people. The patios were all full everywhere there, too. It's just nice. It's nice. It's nice. I just, again, I want to put some positivity out there. Mm -hmm. So come on down and, and get down there early. Go to restaurants. Yes. And a little bit later, with this best thing ever, <laughs> I had an encounter with some little leaguers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> They're trouble. And all, it was, it made my night. Like, uh, it, I smiled about this th for the, the rest of the evening. These kids were hysterical. You'll find out why a little bit later. But right now, Leo, activate the hot dish. Here we go. Let's do this. Here we go. I believe the kids were the uh, Forest Lake Rangers. I think that was the team. That's right. Noted in case we need to see them again. Yeah, Forest Lake <laughs> Rangers. Okay, let's start off. This is the biggest story in pop culture right now. It is a big day for streaming. While we were all sleeping, uh, HBO Max was in a cocoon, and while it was, and then now it is emerged as Max. Oh. HBO Max is done. Uh, the move, you guys know this, is part of that big old Discovery Warner Brothers merger. So here's 
let me try to explain this or answer it. Your HBO account will automatically transfer to Max. On top of that, you can eliminate a streamer now from your smart TV. You can get rid of Disney, uh, Discovery Plus, not Disney, oh. Discovery Plus, because Max now has all of that Discovery content. Plus, you got to know this, Discovery won't cancel for you because Discovery Plus will still exist. So you need to cancel Discovery Plus on your own. Mom, I'll handle it for you later. But yeah, uh, do that. and I'll do it for you too. Thank but you. so do you, do you all get what I mean? So yes, if you want, you can yeah. have both. But why would you pay for Discovery Plus if you pay for Max? Right. Because Max now has all that. Content. All that. So I, I, I logged on. I, I went to the app store. I downloaded the Max app. I signed in. It was really easy. It remembered all of my stuff from uh, HBO Max. So here I am going through the interface. I got to tell you, friends, my early review of the interface, it's really intuitive. It's really easy right here. It is divided into all of their sections, Max Originals, TLC, HDTV, all the DC comic stuff, Cartoon Network, Travel Channel. So if you have a show, there's my mom's favorite in investigation discovery. <laughs> um, she loves a true crime show. Uh, and then Max Originals, when you click into each category, then it looks like that. And then you, you, you swipe through. I don't know. I'm going to go home tonight. I'll put it on the TV. I'll let you know how that is tomorrow. But so far, big winner. Nice. Big winner for the Max. Yeah. I did read, per usual, when there's big technology things, and some of you might have experienced this, that they did have some technical glitches in the very early hours, people trying to log in and it wasn't working. But I'm assuming that, especially since you have your app up now, yeah. things have all been sort of worked out at yeah. this point. Well, there's going to be, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. They're like, Shazam! It, oh, anything, yeah, it's it, anything technical you're going to have, it's not going to go off without a hitch. <laughs> Next to the dish, last week we showed you ABC's fall primetime lineup uh, amid the writer's strike. Well, CBS, meanwhile, is working on their fall schedule and just took out a major insurance policy. That's right. Should the strike not get resolved anytime soon, which it won't. CBS says that they're pushing back the debut of the summer fave Big Brother because they may need Big Brother to help fill their fall schedule. Now, if you watch the BB, you know it typically debuts at the end of June, but this year it's going to debut in August, which I know people will not be happy about because they love their summer Big Brother, mm -hmm. which means the network can stretch it right into late fall. Mm -hmm. I, if I'm CBS and I'm in that meeting, yeah. I would recommend this. Oh, yeah. But if I'm a BB watcher, I'm a little bummed. You know I'm what I mad. mean? Because it's one of the few new shows, new things mm -hmm. on networks really don't program a lot during the summer because we're never home. We're out drinking wine with Leslie Miller on the pontoon. You know hey. what I mean? It's like, yeah, right. she's coming up later. But mm -hmm. their whole lineup, it's so similar to ABC's. Like they have a new game show with Big Brother and they have a new reality show. They have the challenge is coming on to ABC. So it is just it's literally all the same type of thing as ABC and CBS. Well, maybe if the big CEOs up there, the entertainment companies would pay their writers, we wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. I mean, just saying, yeah. Weird. Next in the dish, the color purple is getting a new take. This dropped yesterday from Warner Brothers. It is now this is the trailer of the new version of the classic. Remember, it was an Alice Walker book. Then it was a Steven Spielberg Quincy Jones movie in the 80s with Oprah and Whoopi. Then it became a musical. Now this is the movie based on the musical. Look. That means that we royalty. <laughs> I don't need you to love me. Afternoon. I need me a wife. Even if we have to part, you and me, us, us have one heart. I don't Get off my land! You... I'll rat you every day! Daddy! Nothing but death can keep me from it! Oh, Miss Seelis! You must ain't got no kinfolk around these parts. All I had was my sister. She was the only one who ever loved me. Miss Seeley, Oprah and Quincy are back, and Steven, they're all producers. There's Taraji, uh, Taraji P. Henson, 
uh, Halle Bailey from the upcoming Little Mermaid and Fantasia Barino. She was in the Broadway uh, production. Now she's back in the movie version. She plays Miss Seeley and uh, the Whoopi Goldberg role uh, out in theaters in December, Christmas Day, actually. Ooh. I am real. I love the color purple. We did I, talk about that movie. I, I think it is one of Steven Spielberg's most underrated films. Mm -hmm. I really do. And and it, it's if you haven't if you're a young and you haven't seen it, go read the book and then go see this. Mm -hmm. It's such a good movie and this new take what I'm excited about is it looks like it expands on the relationship between Celie and her sister, mm -hmm. which is a huge it's the whole it's Cross. the journey. I mean, you, it's the beginning and the end. You, you, it looks like we're going to get more about that relationship, which, which is mm -hmm. exciting. And I didn't even, I did not recognize Fantasia. Fantasia, yeah. She, I mean, because she's always so glamorous. And then you hear her not only singing, but speaking. And she has such a distinct speaking voice, too, mm -hmm. that you go, How, who is that? I can't. And then it's like, oh, it's Fantasia from American Idol. Okay, got it. It is weird to see somebody else in the role of Miss Sophia, Oprah's role, you know, because I'm just like, you told Harpo to beat me. Anyway, I could do, <laughs> I, I could do, I could do Oprah's entire part in that movie. Anyway. Uh, that comes out, like I said, on Christmas Day. More to come, but as we go to break, studio audience selfies from the past week. Be sure to sign up to be, well, not those ladies, yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> be sure to sign up to be part of the studio audience. Free tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Search The Jason Show. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Uh, happy birthday to a TV and screen legend. Dame Joan Collins is 90 years old today. That's right. She's considered one of the last surviving stars of the golden age of Hollywood, getting her start in the early 50s. But it wasn't movies that made her famous. It was really her role as the villain Alexis Carrington Colby Dexter Rowan. <laughs> in the ABC hit Dynasty that really made her a star all around the world. Look at this. His answer is no, Blake. He's not sending anyone to talk to you because there's nothing more to talk about. It's all over. The hell it is. Oh, it is. You're broke. Wiped out. You heard him, Blake. You're finished. You've lost everything. And I now own this house. This house? Are you insane? Oh, no. I'm perfectly sane. So take this junk and your blonde tramp and get out of my home. Yes! Yes! Take this junk and your blonde tramp and get out of this house. And now uh, Blake goes up and chokes her. And then, uh, and then they have, uh, this is the season finale. I remember watching this. Oh my, look at those shoulder pads, Kendall. They're fabulous. Kendall, why, Kendall, why are you wearing shoulder pads? Come on. They really do need to make a comeback. Oh my God, look here. Get her, Blake. Oh, we cut out, yeah. So good, no, no. We can't show that on day We can't time. show that anymore. That was the 80s. We didn't mm -hmm. care about that, but no. yeah. But she survives. I mean, spoiler she, alert. Yeah, she. I mean, she, for, spoiler alert for a 35-year-old show. Mm -hmm. Alexis survives. Thank God. She went over. Girl, please. Alexis went through everything. She was shot. Um, she went over a, a bridge in a car. Oh. She fell off. Uh, she fell off a balcony. Uh, Blake choked her there, and then mm -hmm. she choked Blake. And she's 90. Yeah. Well, she wasn't 90 then, but yeah. No, I mean, but yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, she's made it. I love. Oh, Di Dynasty. Uh, was ABC's answer to my beloved show, uh, Dallas. That's and they it was on Wednesday nights on ABC. Oh. Yeah, Dallas came first, and ABC was like, "I want a piece of that pie." Is this the "I own half this company" thing? Oh yeah, uh, Alexis had a had a hot habit of coming into boardrooms. She would open both doors dramatically, and she would say, "I own 51 percent of this company," he still and then does she would that. fire the entire board of directors. He does that daily. I do that in our meetings too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joan is still acting today, appearing in TV, movies, and on stage. Next in the dish, reviews are in for the new live-action Little Mermaid with Halle Bailey. Before we get to some of those, uh, if you happen to be the four people that haven't seen any of the trailer, here's a little bit. You broke the rules. You went to the above world. A man was drowning. I had to save him. This obsession with humans has to stop. 
I just want to know more about them. Ariel! Don't! Poor child. I can help you. You can't live in that world unless you become a human yourself. Is that even possible? That's <laughs> what I live for. <laughs> Ursula, so the movie debuts later this week. It'll come out uh, next week. I'm seeing a sneak preview tomorrow. I'll have my review on Thursday. Meanwhile, here are some other reviews. The Hollywood Reporter was muted in its praise, saying Halle ba uh, Bailey charms, but the live action remake nearly drowns in deja vu. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But there were some uh, good reviews. CNN says the movie shines thanks to Bailey and a warm wave of nostalgia. Variety says Bailey and Melissa McCarthy erase any doubts about this remake's seaworthiness. Yeah, look, I, I, I skimmed through, because I really, you know, I love Disney and I, and I, lo I love The Little Mermaid. There were all of the negative ones. Mm -hmm. They didn't, none of them were horrible. The, the, if you didn't like it, if the critic didn't like it, the main thing was, their criticism was, we didn't need this movie to begin with. Oh. Stop making these live action. That was always their biggest beef, which, I can understand. Right. We don't need all of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. But this, trust me, this is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. This is going to this is going to be box office gold. You the know, little girls are going to be lined up for my yeah. Girls. It's so and it, boys. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like Rob Marshall, the director, and and Halle Bailey. I played her performing a couple uh, last week. Mm -hmm. She has such an amazing voice, so and we just saw her in the color purple there. Next in the dish, let's move from movies to TV. <laughs> Countess Luann. <laughs> And Sonia Morgan are teaming up. Guys, don't, don't move from the TV. This is like the simple life. Are teaming up for a new series on Bravo. And uh, the network dropped a little preview. It's called Welcome to Crappy Lake. <laughs> or as I call it, Crappy Lake. Uh, look at this. We do have two celebrities coming into town. And they are so excited to help the town. <laughs> Here we go. Just put like, Welcome Hollywood. Welcome Small town people don't necessarily like change. Oh my God, I sweat like in church here. Who do I have to f this time you to get a car? Me. Welcome to the Benton Motel, ladies. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to blurt out WTF because that's what I'm thinking. I've got a list of things I want you to do in the town and we're going to work together to get them done. We're never afraid to get our hands dirty. I think they're going to be clueless of what it takes to build a playground. How do I look? You like it? It's hot. It's hot? Whoa. Oh my God. Bed bug killer spray. Too late. I'm not going back. <laughs> From Beverly Hills and famous. I don't know if they'd like fishing or anything. I hear it. Oops, you got it. <laughs> oh god oh sonia sonia luann take over a uh, bitten illinois that's where this is in july hey, uh, simple life is one of my guilty pleasures mm -hmm. i still watch it occasionally i love this formula because if you guys don't know if you're not again versed in the housewives vernacular Countess Luann was a countess, so she's lived a life. And then Sonia was more was Sonia Morgan, is as in J.P. Morgan Chase. So both of the oh, so she's like rich, rich. Yes. That's, Shut up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's where the Morgan. She was and not like she was married to like a, my credit card. Yes, that's the same. Yeah, J.P. Morgan Chase. She was married to a major Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and she's gonna go fishing for crappies. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. Next in the disc, we're learning details about why Bravo couple Kim and Croy Beerman are splitting. Croy claims Kim's uh, gambling problem financially devastated the the family. He's actually asking the court to give Kim a psychological evaluation for her gambling problem. Uh, Kim places the blame uh, on the marriage split on Croy because she said she witnessed him smoking marijuana. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, Kim's side has not responded to the gambling accusations. Uh, now, she's claiming, though, allegedly that she doesn't have a gambling problem, that she doesn't gamble, that she's never been gambling. But, Leo, there she is at a slot machine. I, I just, I'm just saying. There, <laughs> there she is physically at a slot machine. I don't know. Never been. She's never ever been to Mystic Lake. <laughs> Which might be true. I mean, she might not have been at Mystic Lake, but she was 
That was, I know that well. My mother trained me well. I know, I know what a slot machine lever looks like. <laughs> my, my mother trained me well. Hello, Paul yeah. here. It's so funny, Dar will not play fancy new machines. She only wants the actual She only slot. wants the old school, like the, Probably not the, thing. if it has a computer screen with stuff, no, no, yeah. no, my mother likes Spinning simplicity. Wheel. She likes lucky sevens, mm -hmm. she likes the pull, she'll press a button, but yeah. But, but what? She doesn't like jack jackpot party. She doesn't like no. Who's jackpot party? Jackpot party is the best slot machine ever created. Oh yeah. Oh okay. If you get a so if you get like three little party favors, uh -huh. it goes Woo! jackpot party, oh. and then and then the whole damn screen turns into um party balloons, and, and then you, you pop, pop the balloons, and each behind all the balloons are either money, or like you can get more turns. But there are also poopers uh, behind. There's, poop there's party poopers. The poop. And if you get a party pooper, then your bonus is over. But then you can get a pooper saver. <laughs> and then you go back into the bonus. Wow, the things you learn. It's fantastic. Again. <laughs> OK. <laughs> My mother was the Obi-Wan Kenobi of bingo and slot machines. <laughs> Next on the dish, uh, we found producer Ted's new favorite uh, reality dating show. It's called Swiping America, and the trailer just dropped on the new Max. I haven't seen this. Let's look at this together. My understanding that you are about to embark on a dating adventure. I didn't tell you where you're going. You haven't. I really wanted to know. <laughs> We're going on a journey across America to date people. Where are the what damn doctors? Do <laughs> oh, hello. I don't really meet people that I connect with very often, but I, I totally am an eternal optimist. My social media presence is a little bit more confident than I am. What do you do? Uh, I work with adult entertainment. Because oh. <laughs> you could be the one. You look amazing. You look amazing. I am very fluid. I do have that fear. Is there someone for me? <sighs> it's okay. He becomes act natural. I would like a long-term partner, but I keep people at a distance. I don't know how many men have the patience for it. This is such a sad interview. I'm wearing such a dumb outfit. <laughs> Your chin is terrible. Did anyone get railed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> OK. A little spicy there, Max. Anyway, uh -oh. so here's the, 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 the premise. The show follows four singles who travel to eight cities, and the producers do all the setting up. Uh, Swiping America hits Max next month in June. Well, I mean, that's where we used to meet people at clubs and grocery mm -hmm. stores, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but now it's all, I mean, that's... You met people at grocery stores? Oh, yeah. Yeah, back in the pilgrim age. Yeah, that's what we had to do, Kendall. Did you put yeah. ads out in the No, we had, to, we had to physically leave our house to meet people back in the 80s and 90s. My mom Not like you, your younger folks. You can just sit well, on your no, couch. Well, no, we just get to swipe. My mom was telling me how in City Pages back in the day, like there would always be the date, singles dating ads. Um, let's be clear. Um, the ads in City Pages uh, weren't for coffee, let's just say. Yeah. She's, it was the 80s. I don't know. Um, let's just say the ads. Oh. Let's just say if you were looking for someone on City Pages, mm -hmm. there was usually a hotel connected to the experience. Yeah. Mama! I'm not saying Sid did. I'm just, no, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, you didn't go to City Pages for a relationship. <laughs> you went there for an evening. Yeah. Okay. Say la vie. That got awkward. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> Coming up, it's cabin season, it's lake season, it's get in the water season, and wine diva Leslie Miller is here with her ultimate list of summer sips. Then, it's my latest best thing ever, it is a fave available at various locations that will satisfy your Taco Tuesday needs. That and more when we come back. Cabin season is almost here, and our next guest has all the beverages to bring with you on the lake. Give it up for the wine diva, Leslie Miller, everyone, from Amuse Wine. 
and her lovely store in the North Loop of Minneapolis. Sit better if you haven't. You may you may even see Leslie if you go there. You're there a lot. <laughs> I am there a lot. You yes. basically sleep there sometimes. Yeah, you know, I have a cot in the back. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Anyway, okay, where are we starting? We're going to start. So I brought gadgets today, too, which is so fun for now. You're in the summertime feel, so you yeah. got to have some things to keep your wine cool. Um, you also need these amazing little acrylic glasses. Isn't it great to have something? Everybody always worries about bringing glass on the boat or your pool, yeah. right? And these little Go Vino glasses, you can now put them actually in the dishwasher. I love them. Um, and audience, I don't know if you can see it. Leo, take seven if you can. See the little indention right here? It fits perfectly for your little thumb. Yeah. For easy sipping. <laughs> Look how easy this. Leo, take seven again. <laughs> Thank you, audience. Thank you for the ooh. No, but that's great. Yeah, it's such a great little glass. Did you invent this? I did not. Oh, I wish okay. I did, yeah. right? Oh, uh, what am I drinking? What was this? So this is probably one of my new fave rosés. This is made by Field Recordings, which we have a ton of Andrew Jones's wines at the store, Central Coast, California. 18 bucks. I just love it. It's so fresh and peachy and dry and delicious. Plus, it has a killer label. I'm all about this. Uh, I, I was, you know how I love a label. Yeah. This is a great label. It's I such love a great that. label. Also, yes. this fun little uh, Vinnebago. It's called the Vinnebago, and it's made by Corksicle. <laughs> is it really called a Vinnebago? It's called the Vinnebago. This? Yes, and I call it Chanel White. I'm pretty sure they don't call it Chanel White, but I love the Chanel White on this thermos because it'll keep an entire bottle of wine cold. Really? Yes, I love it. I take it with me everywhere. Yeah, you just drink right out of it if you want. Is there any in there? Yeah, it's the oh. bottle of rosé. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> We're friends. I, I, I didn't spit in it. We're good. Yeah. OK, what's next? And then, of course, you need to have some great canned wines, right? So there's a ton of really great canned wines now in the market. I'm a giant fan of these little Ramonas here. Um, the lemon and the grapefruit is delicious. But this is made by Brock Sellers, another kind of maverick California winemaker. And that's his rosé. But look how cute the can is. Look at that. It's so it's adorable. And he also makes a little white and a red in the can. You know, bring these is a great for your picnic basket. And we have to always say it because I know some people are still freaked out that they don't think the quality is good with cans. Again, if Leslie yes. is endorsing it, you know what's good. And this is real delicious. It's this delicious, is real good. Right. Yeah. And again, it's a small grower. So the fact is you can get quality wines in these great cans. Little small, yeah, small yes. grower. Okay. All right, now I love to have something kind of, you know, bubbly, light, and acidic this time of year. Oh, okay. yeah, got oh, a lot. Was a little frothy. Great pour, Leslie. A little great frothy pour. there. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here, you have this glass. Way to go, glass. wine expert. <laughs> <laughs> you take that glass. Okay, this is. <laughs> No shishi poo poo here. No shishi poo poo here. <laughs> okay. Okay, what is this, this is sparkling Sauvignon Blanc. <gasps> That's a thing. It's a thing. It's like a unicorn in wine, you guys. Sparkling Sauvignon Blanc, and this is from South Africa, and I'm obsessed with it. Is this so fun? As you should be. Yeah, it's so good. It's oh, so that good. is real yeah, good. Yeah, this is so yummy. I love this with like sandwiches, goat cheese, all kinds of fun things. But you could also just like throw a handful of fruit in here and have a kind of on the go sangria. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I really <Speechless>. enjoy this. <laughs> How much is this? What's the price point on this bad boy? This is about 23, so up a notch, but I again, small quality or small farm in high quality in South Africa. So Steenberg. Steenberg love Write that it. down everyone. You'll I like this it. for your yeah. Bring that. You know what? 23 if you're going Ooh. to like a summer, like a summer barbecue, mm -hmm. that's a nice, that's reasonable. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. You, you sell this at your store? I do, yes. Don't get it, everyone. Okay. Okay, and then the next category is chillable reds. Okay. Okay, remember we've talked about this on wine myths. Yeah. In the sense that if you have a lighter bodied red grape varietal, you actually can chill them just a titch in the summertime. So just pop them on top of ice, let them sit on ice for about five minutes and enjoy. This is also kind of my new baby obsession. This little Union Sacra, um, it's Sangiovese, but it's kind of like fruit punch, but dry. It's like very, <laughs> yeah. what's happening? It, <laughs> it is has, good. What's happening? What's happening? I, um, good. 
I didn't think I would like this. This is, yeah. I enjoy this. This okay, has like which a one big is this, cherry this pie. Right here? This little union sack This rock. is right here, everyone. This one right here. We have oodles of, of uh, chillable reds at the store. I think that these are such a great category this time of year. A chillable red. Yep, great with grill, you name it. Okay, we have one more. Of course, if you're going big, you know, you're taking a steak on the grill or something like that, you do not have to overspend in this category. And it's a really tough category to find well-priced Cabernet. Okay. This is one of the most expensive grapes in the world, just in general. Cab is? Cabernet, yeah. It's always about 10 times the price per ton. Um, people, it's just a coveted grape. That's a fun grape. fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, let me drink this. So this is from Washington. This is Lone Birch, and this is about $15. It gives you all the things that you want in Cabernet, rich, dense, a little snitch of pepper. It's, it's a just, little smoky. Do I? It's a little yeah. smoky. Am I right yes. on that? Yeah, it's got a little crack of pepper in there. I taste the crack of pepper. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, $15. Oh. For $15, yes. For Cabernet, that's hard, right? But uh, this is beautiful. Cheers to all of these. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. to all of these. Cheers. Don't worry. Cheers. Don't worry. We'll post all of this. Uh, Addie already getting it up on our socials. Uh, we'll put it, search for Jason Show TV. More with Leslie when we come back. She's answering your wine questions, including how to keep wine fresh the best way when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> This is good. Yeah. <laughs> is that mango? Is that mango? Is that mango in there? <laughs> well, welcome back to the show. We're here with wine expert Leslie Miller from Amuse Wine. Since Leslie's last visit, we received some more wine questions uh, for her. So you ready? I'm ready. It's like it's like Carson used to do stump the band. This is a stump Leslie. Yeah. Stump the stump. Here we go. First up, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. She asks, hey, Leslie, how many days will a bottle of wine last after you open it? <laughs> We've oh. asked you this in so many ways. I know. Uh, the staff I has. Know. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, um, it's just two days. It's just two days. This is the reason why I <laughs> Back really. Back row is like, what? <laughs> yeah. This is really why I promote can. I love can because it's a one sort of serving situation. And also box because you have three weeks on that box. You keep it in the fridge. It's delish. You know, there's nothing that you can do. You can Walt Disney cryogenically chamber this wine. <laughs> and, <laughs> and sorry. I That's not up. real. You're spreading <laughs> fake news. <laughs> but you, you're definitely, you're not getting past two days on it. And also, the more inexpensive it is, you kind of want to drink it in the car on the way home. <laughs> no, 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 don't, no don't do, do that. that. Don't but do that, don't do that. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a no, turn no, of no. phrase. Yes, don't yes, really yes. do that. You want to drink it quickly <laughs> once you get home. Yeah. Leslie, yeah. we're going to get emails. No, <laughs> no, you know what she meant. Yes. She meant drink yeah. quickly, drink for quickly. heaven's yes. sake. Uh, overly sensitive. Okay, here we go. Number two, you ready? Yes. Uh, Ronnie asks, hey, Leslie, what's the best gadget to keep wine fresh after you open it? You know, there's a couple of things out there in the market. There's the pump, which is the most inexpensive, right? Yeah. It, sucks the, it sucks the oxygen out. And the oxygen is the deterrent here. There's also an argon gas that you can spray into the bottle because argon is heavier than oxygen. Oh my God, just drink the bottle. I know. That's just, you know, I know. what I mean? But, the, but there's a lot of myths out there. Keep it in the fridge, do all these things, and those are all false, unfortunately. All of them are false. Yeah, they are, but you wanna keep it out of heat, light, and vibration. So not next to like the stove. <laughs> what the hell is happening at <laughs> your house? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's a lot of space. <laughs> I live next door to you, Leslie. I don't, your building doesn't move that much. You can't yeah. hear. <laughs> you can't hear next door. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. but that's weird vibration. So many emails today, by the way. So many emails. <laughs> so many emails. <laughs> We're having fun. It doesn't matter. No, but uh, so just keep, yeah, just drink yeah. it fast. Yeah, drink yeah. it, yeah. Now yeah. the last question. Marissa. <laughs> Hi, Marissa. Hey, Leslie, I'm getting married this summer. How many varieties of wine should I have at my reception? Oh, that's a good question. This is an amazing question because I have brides contact me all of the time. Oh, my gosh, how many bottles should I have? How many kinds of wine? One, you need a bubbly for the toast, right? Yeah. So I always say get a pink dry bubbly, and there's so many out there. You know, we've showed so many yep. here. 
um, you know, $15. I bought a lot for yeah, me. We've, we've shared a lot of them as well. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, and then do a white. Now, I like Sauvignon Blanc in the summertime, something lighter like that. Um, and then do one red. And you could do something like Pinot Noir or Cabernet, but honestly, I don't like that big, heavy red when I'm sitting at a wedding. Yeah. I think a Pinot is so great for the summertime, and it kind of goes with so many different styles of food. Don't you think Pinot, whether it's a spring or even yeah. a fall wedding, yes. you're right about the cab thing. The cab thing, everybody's like, oh, I should get cab because that's what my dad wants at the wedding. It's always someone's father that wants the cab. Really? <laughs> it's always someone's dad. Like, my dad said, get a cab. I'm like, well, then get your dad a bottle of cab to keep under the table. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, is get Pinot Noir. What's, what's under the table? It's Dad's cab. Dad's wine. <laughs> I love these are good questions today. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. give it up for Leslie. For more information, head to her website. And can I share your anniversary news? Can I tell the people? Yes. Amuse Wine Company. Leslie celebrated 20 years this year. Yeah. That's right. Which is crazy considering Leslie's only 30. Yeah, I'm I mean, that's great. So. <laughs> Amusewine.wine.com. And if you're in the Twin Cities, visit her shop in the North Loop. Sit better. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome back. Going to a baseball game is really one of my favorite. I said this at the top of the show. One of my favorite things to do in the spring of summer. Uh, last night, I went to another Twins game at our beautiful Target Field and found yet another reason to go to a game. And I'm naming it my latest best thing ever. If you're a... Uh, if you're looking for something besides a hot dog and peanuts and some chicken fingers uh, to eat while you're at the stadium, how about some of the best street tacos I've ever had? I'm not kidding. And it's, it's so good. Uh, I, I taped this little piece yesterday. Take a look. So I got to Target Field a little early to enjoy a best thing ever, La Tapatia. There's Colin getting some. Look, I love a good dog. I love a good brat, obviously, but at Target Field, this is the best thing ever that you should know about. Okay, here are the little bad boys now. Look at that. Kyle, which version did you get? Those are the street tacos. The street tacos. Yeah. Chicken? Yep, that's all they got. That's all they got? Dobo chicken, street style, or you can do Cali style, which comes with lettuce, tomato, and cheese. Isn't? Oh, so fresh, so good, so filling. You can get these in the main concourse at La Tapatia, and you can also get them in, if you're fancy, the Legends Club. Model, put your hand there, model the, the Legends Club. But we're not that fancy today. Not today. Okay. So, I'm done naming best things ever. What team are you guys? Okay. They didn't recognize me from the show. They recognized me from the movie theater. The trailers are getting ready to start, and I really don't want to miss it. Slash, you're ruining my movie-going experience. So, silence your damn phone. Yeah! <laughs> I gotta tell you. Oh. Oh, audience, I gotta tell you, those kids cracked me up. I love them. I'm standing there, and, and, and this sound, you'll know what I mean. I, I, I've been in this market, I've done TV, uh, well, 97, what is that, 26, whatever? A I while. don't know. A lot, a while. Mm -hmm. And the radio show's been around since 2008, you know? Mm -hmm. So usually, if someone comes up to me, it's one of a couple things. It's, you know, hey, I, I listen to you on the radio or the Jason show, hey. tell Kendall I said hi, whatever. <laughs> I never get. So this, I'm standing there eating, ta Collins eating the taco, and this kid comes up and he goes, hey, mister, like a, <laughs> like a guy from the 50s, you know? And I turn around and I go, hi. He goes, are you the movie guy that tells us not to talk? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and it, my brain didn't compute it. Yeah. Because I did that for Imagine Theaters a while ago. About four years ago, yeah. 2019. So I didn't compute and I went, oh, you mean Imagine Theaters, the, the pre show? I'm in the pre film telling you to <laughs> shut up. And he goes, Yeah, I said that. 
And then all of the kids surrounded me. Everybody pulled out their phone and they wanted me on their TikTok to say, shut up. Your, uh, shut off your damn phone. So <laughs> I did, they were lined up and I did their, I did like 40, 15 videos telling people to shut off their phones for these kids. And they were the nicest, their parents were, I'm over here. They're, uh, I'm new to TV. Uh, the, the, their parents, y'all raised some good boys. They were so nice and so fun. Uh, again, it's the lake, uh, what did I say? Forest Lake. Forest Lake Rangers, and so nice. And Imagine Theaters, thanks for still keeping that around. I'm still there, yeah, all these years later, telling you to. But really quick too, La Tapatia is, in, uh, is based in Roseville, and that was their first location. There's their website right there. If you're familiar with Roseville, uh, they're right by the Olive Garden and the old Khan's Mongolian Barbecue. Mm. There is a location, like I said, in Target Field. There's one of the Legends Club. I'm not joking. It's our go-to meal when we're at Target Field. And Lord knows mm -hmm. there's plenty to eat at Target Field. We go there to La Tapatia. If you're watching us from Seattle or other markets, email us and let us know where your favorite places are in your stadium. Uh, we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. because I, you know, I love stadium food. I and if love. you can send it to us, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can send it in dry ice, that would be it's great. Fine. Yeah, we don't want to yeah. eat old tacos, but yeah. yeah. Um, but it was so good. Locally owned, delicious, fresh. Not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. After a while, you don't want a lot of fried food. Right. This is a great one. Head to, again, head to La Tapatia, MN.com for more information. And that, my friends, is our latest best thing ever. If you have a suggestion, if you have a suggestion for me, you can email us on the Jason Show socials. Search for Jason Show TV, and who knows, it could end up right here on the show. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Eventbrite.com. Search for the Jason Show and pick a date. But please only pick a date that you can actually come. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Today, one person trying to profit off of Taylor Swift and Mother Nature. <laughs> a fan who attended Taylor's show in Massachusetts over the weekend is trying to sell the rain that fell during the show. <laughs> As you can see, it was a complete washout. But T. Swift did the entire three and a half hour show. If you're wondering, a jar of rain from Taylor Swift's concert will run you 250 bucks. Some Taylor fans are calling them holy water. <laughs> I have no comment. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Wow. <laughs> Link is on our Instagram right at the top of our bio. Good stuff. Time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. Uh, we don't know what's in this segment until I read it live right now. Today, one, a flight, at one flight attendant goes above and beyond in this uh, in his safety demonstration. Watch. Inflate the vest by pulling down firmly on the red tabs or blowing into the tubes on both sides. Do not inflate your vest inside the plane. A locator light on the shoulder will turn on automatically in water. This Airbus A320 has eight emergency exits. Two doors in the front, over your head. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's pretty good. Uh -huh. This jet blue flight attendant is definitely having a good time with his job. People commenting online says, dude deserves a raise. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Your mom, speak, well, yeah. Yes. Your mom was a flight attendant. Did she? Did uh, Sid ever do that? For 33 years. That's right. I don't right. know. She could boogie. I, I do know she had flights where she'd sign up with other flight attendant friends because you could pick your trips. And she said they would just have a hoot. And the, everybody on the flight would be like, this was the best flight ever. I and still out. want to. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No. I still want to do a segment with your mom sometime yeah. where I just, inter I want to hear the horror stories. Like the Lucille from, Ball you, story Yeah, and stuff? like she has uh -huh. a great, yeah, Kendall's mom has a story about Lucille Ball. Stanley Tucci. Yeah, I, we, we need to do, I want to talk to her. Yeah. Because I love flight attendant stories tomorrow. So tomorrow though, see what happens when Stephanie Hansen invades someone's uh, pantry to make a delicious, we've gotten permission. She's just not randomly showing up. She would, but you know. Right now, though, if you're a kid being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.
Let's go, Kendall. Okay. Thank you.